Hey everybody, welcome to the channel. You know, I've been seeing a lot of uh, questions being asked on Facebook, you know, from new carvers about certain tools and things. And everybody seems to ask about this Lancelot attachment right here for their grinder. And you know, I really think it's time to just do a video about this thing, talk about some safety, show you some other options and just, just kind of go over it. So hopefully you guys will stick around. Be sure to give this video a thumbs up and hit subscribe. <laughs> get right to it it's really early in the morning actually the sun's not even up here I wanted to uh, just get right on making this video and getting it right out there because I just think it's a really good topic it's a big safety topic and there's a really big question that I see a lot of beginner carvers and a lot of new carvers ask often I mean often and they're asking on all kinds of social media the same thing over and over again um, and what that is is hey what about this King Arthur Lancelot tool for my angle grinder this guy right here covered in chainsaw teeth what about this tool how's this for carving who has this who uses this people that don't want their fingers use this um, in a little while in this video, I'm going to put up some seriously graphic, graphic pictures, okay? So this is your guys' first warning. I'll warn you again before those pictures go up. If you have a weak stomach, when that second or third warning comes up, that's time for you to just, you know, maybe fast forward a little bit. I'll uh, Maybe I'll try to tell you where to fast forward to so you can skip those photos because they're, they're pretty nasty. But I'm going to let you know some carving artists voluntarily shared these photos with me so that I could put them in this video to just show you guys how dangerous this tool seriously is. Now, this Lancelot tool right here, it's a chainsaw chain, okay? It actually comes in like three pieces. You got a front and a backing and the chain goes in there and you spread it out to make this ring. Now it only stays together when you put it in the grinder. As you can see, I don't have it in any of my grinders because you know, the name that people call this, the wheel of death, I, I really, yeah, this thing is the wheel of death, for real. Just huge waste of money. This was one of my first purchases in carving. I had got a chainsaw, I saw this thing at a hardware store and I bought it. And I didn't look it up. I didn't do reviews. I didn't, I didn't even do YouTube then. And I only used it a few times and realized this is one dangerous thing right here. One dangerous, this thing is dangerous. And it went on a shelf and that's where it's been. It's just been there. I, I think now it's a good tool to use for a safety talk. And that's about it. There, this tool is not going to see any more action in this shop or outside or anywhere. So it's pretty dirty. Um, I think, oh boy, it's been a long time. It might, it looks like it was pine I used it in. And even with that, it was, I just, I still remember this thing being scary. And uh, yeah, so anyway. Chainsaw chain on here, right? You put it in your angle grinder and you start carving and cutting away. Everything seems great. You know, they want you to leave your guard on. As you can see, my guards aren't on my grinders, but they want you to leave the guard on. It'll maybe just fit in there depending on the guard that you have. I mean, it should fit. These four inch discs fit. But the problem is most people, one, have that guard on wrong. Two, they've removed that guard altogether, okay? Why? Well, we remove the guards because as we're carving or sanding or grinding, it tends to get in our way, right? Now, maybe you're really new and you don't remove that. And honestly, I do not recommend removing the guards. I know I don't have them on my tools. I don't recommend removing them. They're there for a reason. There's been plenty of times my hand has slipped and I've caught myself with just this saber tooth disc and it's like ground down the side of my finger 
or my glove, because usually I'm wearing gloves. Same thing with this 80 grit flap disc. This one's pretty spent, but you know, here's a new one. I'm getting ready to put on next. These things, they'll tear your finger apart, but they're not gonna tear you apart the same way this thing would tear you apart. Now, this Lancelot is spinning around. It's a chainsaw chain, okay? These are more like sanding implements. They're sanding attachments. And you can shape and carve with them and they can still be very versatile. But in my opinion, they're missing one thing and that is these half inch sharp teeth that grab and pull, okay? So I'm trying to put this together so you guys can see it a little better, sorry. All right, close enough. Now, what do I mean by that? So look at this, you know, we, we're covered in teeth on here, but this still is way safer than this. Why, how, how do you figure that? To me, it feels like common sense. This is cutting and sanding and shaping and, and grinding, right? And there's different grits for that. And they still can jack you up if you're not safe. But this guy, this guy right here, when these teeth are spinning, they have one job and it's the same job that your chainsaw is. That is to cut in and tear away. Okay, think of, so think about it. You've got these teeth. They arch over and concave back. So they're grabbing into whatever it is you're trying to cut and pulling away each time there's a rotation. So it comes down and pulls away. I'm using my finger because this is kind of what we're talking about, you know, being safe. Now, when they're really sharp, it can be very effective on wood. You know, you sharpen your chainsaw chains. It's super effective for cutting wood and shaping and carving. And sometimes even like a sanding and shaping motion works. So one problem with this, though, is your hand is very, very close to the chainsaw chain. I mean, your hand is really close to it. So let's say this thing's on here, right? And your hand is on there. I know it's not attached because I'm not going to even attach it. It's just, I, I'm not wasting my time. Your hand is here. Now look how close this would be if it was on in place. Like, use your imagination, guys, okay? Like, we're adults. I'm sure you guys get what I'm trying to say. But look how close your hand would be. Even with the guard on, your hand is still really, really close to that chainsaw chain. Now, when you're running a chainsaw... These are just my battery saws, but they're still chainsaws. Look how far away my hands are from that chainsaw chain, right? And this thing's spinning, cutting away. I get kicked back. What happens? Well, now it's on. I get kicked back. What happens? You guys hear that? Chain break. You hope you're holding the saw properly so that chain break kicks off and that chain stops spinning. The gas saws had the same thing, all right? Why? It's a safety feature. There's no safety feature on this. The safety feature is you pray to God it unplugs as it tears through your flesh. That's it. There's your safety feature. I mean, or hopefully you can hit the switch in the midst of this thing eating you apart. Crazy, right? So have you ever been taught not to do this? Never put a grinder face down especially when it's plugged in. These aren't plugged in. But you should never lay a grinder face down either, okay? That's another safety feature of a grinder. Grinder should always be this way. Primarily, especially, I mean, when they're plugged in. Because if it decides to kick on, they go haywire, right? Now imagine that going haywire with a chainsaw attachment. You're trying to grab it or catch it. Because in the moment, we're not always thinking, hey, grab the wire and just unplug it when this thing's going 8,000 miles an hour all over the place. So just some, some safety stuff. Keep that in mind with just the sanding discs and the carving discs at all as well. I know we're kind of a little all over the place here, but there's just one main point and that's these things are freaking dangerous and guys, don't waste your money on this. So let's, let's keep working on driving this home, right? Let's think about this, okay? What I'm trying to get at is the RPMs are really high on these. These are spinning super fast. So let's pretend, again, imagination, because I don't want to pull, I don't feel like pulling everything apart for this video. This thing doesn't deserve the time of day for that. So let's pretend that that Lancelot's on here. And you're carving away, right? 
You got Popeye forearms. You're like, I'm a man's man. I can do this, Kyle. Quit being a wuss, right? Beef up. Maybe you can hold that tool. I'm going to let you know. When that thing grabs, what do your points of contact look like? What's stopping this from ripping out of your hand? What? This little rinky-dink handle with no stopper on the end? Think about that. Grabs, yanks. Or it's on the wrong side. Grabs, yanks. Right out of your hand. What are you holding on here? This handle that's a little too big and uncomfortable for most hands to grip. You're not getting a good grip on that. Great for sanding, shaping, light carving, right? With discs like that and sanders like this. But if you're using that and you get down here on the wrong edge or in the nose or the tip of that, that thing's going to yank. Running at several thousand RPMs and it's going to yank out of your hand, right? Or it's, let's see here, when it's spinning, it may grab and come at you. So it's going to hit you here. And at that time, your hand's probably going to come off and it's going to run right through you or it's going to gut you. Or like some of the photos, it's going to drop out of your hands because it scared the heck out of you. And it's going to slash and slice and dice you up. Think about it. Now, does that mean you should be scared of these? Yeah, everybody should have a little bit of fear of an angle grinder because they're dangerous as hell, guys. But so is everything else we use to carve. We've got to use common sense as to what we're putting on these tools and how we're using them and being comfortable with them, right? But not too comfortable that you're throwing all safety measures aside. Again, I know my, my tools and I'm probably more comfortable than I should be. My guards should be on here and I'm saying to you, don't take your guards off. Just use them as they are with them on. Figure out how to make it work, all right? Now, I know there's going to be all kinds of comments on this video and People are going to probably call me names and call me out and, you know, set an example and all this stuff, right? Well, I'm setting the example to you to not buy this tool. This is that, That's where the example is. This thing, you don't want it. Remember, like I just said, chainsaw's got a chain break. Your hands are really far away from that fast spinning chain you're cutting wood from, right? You can still get hurt with this. But honestly, I feel the danger is a lot lower. I see more photos of that Lancelot attachment ripping people to shreds, carving, then I see photos of people's chainsaw ripping them apart when they're carving. We're, we're specifically talking about carving, sanding, shaping, sculpting, okay? I see less accidents with chainsaws than I do with this. Is it because people are posting more about this or trying to get the word out that this thing is dangerous? This Lancelot? Maybe. I don't know. I mean, I've seen guys get hurt that are arborists taking down trees and things with chainsaws. But I still see more posts of people getting hurt with this thing. All right, guys? If you're new and you're starting out to carve, just stay away from it. And if you've been carving for a long time, you're like, oh, maybe I'll try it. Dude, save your money. Okay? Just save your money. What are some other options? Okay, we're done. I'm done with this. Don't buy this thing. It is junk. The only reason I've kept it is because I planned on doing a video about it here in the future. But honestly, there goes like 50 bucks. I just chucked across the shop because it is a piece of crap. A dangerous piece of crap. And you guys should not buy it. Okay? Let's look at some options before we get into the pictures. The grizzling pictures. Let's look at some other options. So we're going to stay away from that, right? If you guys are looking to get a good angle grinder, you're going to spend 80 to 100 bucks anyway. And if you were thinking of that attachment, you're going to spend, what, 40 50 By the time you've spent that money, you could have bought an MS-170, all right? You would have had a bar similar to this. This is not an MS-170, but stay with me. You'd have a bar similar to this. Look at the nose of that. The circumference of this nose is much smaller than the death trap, okay? This means you can get in tighter. You can do more things with this than you could that angle grinder anyway. Maybe you wanted to carve bowls. You know, if you were to take that piece of wood you want to carve into a bowl, put it in your jaw horse, and use this saw to start honing it out, you're getting a lot of work done right there. Cutting lines, scraping, and yada, 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 get her done, right? You want to take that one step further, you get the dime tip bar. These things will fit an MS-170, a saw where if you're watching steel, you can get it for like 150, 160 bucks because it goes on sale every year. It's one of those saws that steel pushes. 
and pushes for sales, the 170 and the 250. Those saws sell all the time, guys, and they're way safer than that attachment. Well, let's say you've already got some saws, but you're trying to figure out, you know, I want different attachments for shaping and, and doing some other things and refining my work. Cool, jump into the angle grinder, by all means. But let's look at some different attachments. Sabretooth makes some really, really amazing discs. They have different shapes, they have flat, they have a donut, they've got some that come up that are like really rounded, in my opinion, would be great for bowls. So if you took the chainsaw to a bowl, carving a bowl, and you got it all gouged out, but now it's really rough, those ones kind of cone up like that, and you could use that probably to hone out your bowl. But again, safety, safety, safety. If you're running these things, you should already have your chaps on. These discs work great. They come in like three different, maybe four different grits now. And like usual, guys, I will have links to everything I'm talking about except that death wheel. I'm not, no, no. But I'll do my best to have links to some of these tools and some of these, these, uh, these attachments here. So this wheel I use a lot for sanding and shaping bigger carvings. Um, if you want to get in and refine that sanding and shaping, get be able to smooth it out even more, it's where a flap sander comes in. This is 80 grit. I usually buy just 80 grit wheels. This one's a DeWalt. This one's made by Diablo. These work great for like sanding down and smoothing out, you know, your bare faces or whatever it is you're working on. I go through these quite a bit. They work good. Can be a little pricey. Another option for this angle grinder is having a backing plate and these sanding discs. Put these on, pop it in there. A lot of guys use this. I use these. Again, you want the guard on though, because if your hand slips, this is still gonna cut you open, okay? But it's not gonna rip and tear your finger straight off. It's gonna cut into it. Same thing here, cut into you. Same thing here, it can still cut into you. Now, these are tools that we use in the carving world, but you've gotta be conscious as to what you're doing and really be paying attention, okay? So another option is the ArborTech Mini Carver. This is a newer addition to my, uh, my collection of carving tools. And as always, I've got saber tooth discs. These are two inch. This thing can get in some really tight spots. I like the way it works. It's variable speed. I do, I like this thing. Again, saber tooth has all kinds of different grits and shapes for this. So we've got some donut wheels here. I've actually got a flat faced wheel, so it's more flat. And here we've got a fine, coarse and heavy or really coarse grit bit. These do quite a bit of work. Um, after that, you can get into the die grinders, which you guys see me use in a lot of videos. I don't have any bits in them right now, but Sabretooth has a whole line of bits for those. I'll probably just look for a kit and share a, a kit or the bits I use the most below. But that's, that's you know, that's kind of it. Here are some options, guys. Got to give you options. We got to talk about the dangers and, okay, that thing's dangerous, so what do I do? Talk about some other options, right? Um, there is another attachment, you guys, I really, I really think you should stay away from. It just, it looks like a super bad idea, okay? And what that is, is they have taken a bar and chain from a chainsaw, and they have attached it to an angle grinder. So you've got a chainsaw bar and chain coming off here. We, we just said why the, the Lancelot... The death wheel is super dangerous. So why do you think that would be super dangerous? Chainsaw chain or bar and chain coming off here. One, your hand's right next to it, right? Two, where's the chain break? Where, where's the chain break on that? How's that gonna, that gets away from me for kickback. How's that gonna shut off? Yeah, you could use a paddle grinder here but if you're not giving it full power all the time, you're gonna get tons and tons of kickback and it's probably not gonna spin that long chain fast enough on that bar to even come close to being safe. I Again, another tool. Looks like they're made somewhere else with no safety in any mind. I mean, yeah, stay away from it. Another tool that looks like a super bad idea. I mean, if you're all about losing limbs and possibly death on yourself, then, you know, by all means. But I don't think most of us are looking at it like that. I would stay away from that attachment. Okay, guys? Now, coming up to that time. Got to share some photos here. Um, I, 
I really, really appreciate the photos that were shared to me. The guys that shared the photos, I mean, in my opinion, it takes a lot for a guy to say, I made a mistake. You know, I, I, things happen, stuff happens, stuff happened, I got hurt. It really takes a lot sometimes for us dudes and some of, some of you ladies to say, I got hurt and I'm going to tell everyone I got hurt. Now, these guys have shared their photos with me to share with you guys of their accident with the Lancelot. They're not dumb. They're not stupid. They're, they didn't, things happen. All right, guys. So I don't want to hear comments below that those, anything bad about those guys and from these photos, because honestly, stuff happens and it could happen to you. And I commend them for sharing the photos and uh, a little bit of the story with me as to what happened and their willingness to be part of this video to just get the word out that you guys should just stay away from that attachment, okay? And uh, like I said, I'm not going to tolerate stupid comments below, like knocking these guys down and, and saying bad things about it. I'll just delete it. I'll get rid of you. I, I really, I don't care. Um, I don't think most of you will do that though. Most of you are, are pretty cool, pretty respectful people on here that follow my channel and I, I appreciate that. So let's get into these photos. I'm going to voice over, you know, just who they are and uh, maybe just talk about the injury and what, what it really looks like just in case you guys are unsure. So if you are squeamish, if you are not somebody that wants to see some gory I mean, it's gore, gory shots of blood and muscle tissue and bone. Skip ahead. Um, at this time, I will insert a, a time frame right here. You can skip ahead past this time frame and you will be past the photos of that you don't want to see. Okay, so we'll... we'll We'll put that right here, right here, guys. I'm giving you ample time to jump ahead to this time frame right now. And uh, hopefully you didn't fast forward to this spot because that's a bummer for you. So let's get into it. I'll do a little voiceover on these shots. And again, you guys, I really appreciate you sharing this so we can make this uh, the safety video. So let's see what they look like. Here we go, guys. So these photos are from Michael Carr. He's a wood carver was using the lance a lot and as you guys can see it got away from him and his fingers got tore up pretty bad i mean he looks pretty lucky that he's still even got his fingers these pictures are really rough these next photos are from michael d block um these are of his leg again Lancelot got away from him and i mean that looks like some serious damage to his leg that's a pretty big gash pretty deep i mean yikes there's the stitches after so this is the last photo of this stuff okay guys Ooh, right yikes um some rough stuff there guys rough stuff just think about how that could be you if you already own this attachment throw it in the garbage you don't want to pass this thing down you don't want your grandkids or your kids to find it down the road years later and go Oh, this looks fun. Maybe I'll put it in my grinder and carve up some stuff. You don't want that to happen, right? Just, just get rid of it. Get rid of it. Throw it out. Don't even buy it. You know, if you don't have it, don't buy it. Um, you guys, safety is just a big, a big thing. It's not something to laugh at. And I know sometimes my videos, they may not look like the safest thing, but I'm doing my best to be safe and you should be as well. Again, I know I'll get some criticism on this. There usually is. And whatever. You know what? Whatever. You're so good at whatever, then shoot a video and show us all your safety tips, right? Most of the people that comment nonsense don't make YouTube videos and don't share any of their knowledge and keep it all for themselves, but expect other people to know better. Whatever. Um, hopefully, this video has been, you know, knowledgeable. I know I kind of just went over stuff quick and we, we went over a lot of things. Just stay away from that. You know, guys, if, if you guys have questions on these tools or where you can get stuff, honestly, I'll have Amazon links below to the stuff that I use or I'm recommending. Check those links out. If you guys are carving, always, a pair of gloves, 
earmuffs, something to protect your face. You know, like I wear a screen shield when I'm carving, usually. Um, a pair of chaps, steel toe shoes, boots, something like that. Wood falls, breaks your toe, your chain snaps, cut your foot. I mean, anything can happen out there, okay? So just be safe. Be safe. Your hearing's important too. Earmuffs. I mean, just be safe, guys. Be conscious as to your surroundings, what you're doing, and think about those purchases for new tools before you buy them and use them. Make sure you're reading reviews. Make sure you're asking questions. I mean, that's what brought this whole video about. A beginner chainsaw carver page on Facebook. Um, I've seen more than one guy ask about it, and I was just like, it is time to seriously do a video about that death wheel and just try my hardest to discourage all of you that follow me from even looking at that thing because ugh, I think I've said it enough, right? We've gone over it enough, haven't we? So, all right, guys, that's it. I'm not going to continue to ramble on about this. We already talked about it. I seriously hope you guys have an awesome day. Don't be brought down by this video, okay? There's still some really awesome carving tools out there to use. Go make something awesome. Stay safe. Be sure to give this video a thumbs up and hit subscribe. I really love the support from you guys, and I seriously appreciate it. So, yeah, that's it. I'll see you guys next time.